from just a few minutes, it went really, really dark at work. And then all of a sudden the heavens opened and you just could hardly see. It was really black, it was almost like night time. It was weird. It was like what biblical sort of, you know, proportions of flooding. The water was literally bouncing off the walls. Within a minute, the road just turned into a river. A colleague in the staff room got a phone call from his wife, who taught in the centre of Newcastle, asking whether the children were safe. I know they said it was a one-off and it wouldn't happen again for the however many years, but you just don't know with this weather. My research looks at how heavy rainfall events are changing now, how they've changed over the last 50 years or so in terms of both frequency and intensity over the UK and, and how they might change in the future. Data that we've looked at for the UK um, suggests that already these heavy events are, are increasing in, in the winter and there's some evidence to suggest that they're increasing in the summer as well. We've just got hold of a, a new data set of the Environment Agency that we've been investigating to look at what's happening to these hourly extremes. And there's some suggestion, basically, that these events are becoming more frequent. Can you bring up that cockroach burn again? Yeah, this is the latest um, camera image that we've got from the new tells. So In some parts of the Tyneside area, we recorded a storm event that should only occur every 150 years, over two inches of rainfall in two hours. And really, the, the drainage systems can't cope with that. And with the development that we've had in, in urban areas, that water has nowhere to go and it runs off into the streets and it, it floods people's homes and floods the roads and floods businesses and people can't get about. And I think we've seen a lot more of that recently over the last few years. Hi, this is Phil Welton, Area Base Controller in the Environment Agency's Incident Room. Yeah, just to let you know, we've got a development situation on the Ooseburn as well, uh, as well as Hexham at the moment. Yeah, there could be a number of properties affected. We've issued the flood warning for Cockshaw Burn in Hexham and also on the Ooseburn. We can't keep on doing what we've been doing in the past because that'll just mean digging up more roads, putting in bigger sewers, bigger storage tanks, more cost, more disruption. What we have to try and do is find a way of taking surface water out of it from these very heavy rainfall storms and storing it somewhere else to release back into the water courses naturally or put it back into our own system but much slower than it comes in at the moment. We're doing a lot with the university on doing some research which is really interesting on modelling our network better and modelling what happens above the ground and putting those models together, looking at what happens with climate change and changing weather patterns to say, well, what does that mean for the future? Over the last several years at Newcastle University, we've developed a, a very detailed flood model to predict where flooding will happen. The idea is that we can put design rainstorms into the model which represents something like the big storms we had here in Newcastle last June and these models will then tell us which areas will have the deepest flooding where the, the runoff will be generated and will end up. The models allow us to, to not only work out where the problem areas are going to be, these hot spots where we're seeing flooding occurring, they also allow us to show what happens if we take away the impermeable surfaces, the block paving and people's drives, and we can replace that with green space, which soaks water into the ground, run the model again, and see what difference that makes, where the rainfall soaks into the ground rather than running off onto the surface and causing flooding. In the Great Park, it's a, there's a great example where the, the surface water runoff is directed towards attenuation ponds. So before that water runs off into the Ooseburn, which would cause a flood risk downstream, it's attenuated in some ponds. And what we look for is, is the development to deliver uh, a reduction in runoff that would have happened before that development occurred. So that development is actually improving the situation downstream. So it's really important that new developments think about this, but also existing developments think about the consequences of their water running off uh, and where that water can go. And, and if they can do some, something about that, it's really important that, that everybody plays their part. This is the front entrance to the site. The principal road goes through here. The first of the commercial developments is just over there. The first of the residential developments is a little bit further to the south. So what we have here is the water course and there are flow control devices which limit the flow to the downstream system. All of the flow from the development site discharges into this wonderful sustainable urban drainage pond and that stores all of the excess flows up to a one in a hundred year storm and that's how we restrict the risk of flooding downstream. The Ooseburn has a particular problem further downstream um, of development going right up to its boundary which means that as soon as it over brims, you're in people's private land. 
since creating this, the problem has been eased further down the Eastbourne. It must be about collaborative working, so it has to be about early engagement with developers, but it's also about thinking about the future, so not, not considering drainage at the very end of the planning process, but very much at the front of it. We're looking to replicate something at the Great Park, whereby we are hoping that the, the scheme we are looking to do will manage the surface water and manage um, a lot of the problems that we have on one of our estates, whereby it, it suffers from river flooding, from overland flow flooding, from incapacity issues in the sewage system and bring in something which then prevents that from happening in the future. So the creation of something similar to the Great Park which, which obviously reduces the impact and hopefully prevents flooding in future. Whilst we cannot say we'll never prevent flooding from happening, I think we all need to work better to do this in future and that means we must look at the sustainable ways. If we keep on doing what we've been doing, the cost of doing that service will increase and those costs are passed on to customers, so it may not be the most cost effective solution, it will cost businesses more. But more than that, there's a community piece of work here that says that you can do something that enhances the local environment for your own reputation, but in the long run, fundamentally it comes down to that would be probably a lower cost way of doing it than what we're doing at the moment. The River Green Centre was intended to be a place that would be a very positive and creative place to work. Um, you know, we're sitting in a room with a green roof above us and a pond just to the left of us. And the water runs off the roof at a slower rate than it would do otherwise. Um, so uh, the likelihood of flooding is reduced because of that. But some of the water that runs off doesn't go straight into drains. It goes into the pond. And the pond is a sort of large uh, holding tank that uh, helps to avoid flooding. I think that water runoff control needs uh, solutions at the macro level and at the micro level and uh, I think what we've got here is a good micro level solution. And is this, do you think, this is going to be the way forward not just for future developments but for, I suppose, retrospectively going back and thinking... From our point of view, I guess overall, what we'd like to do more and more businesses is talk to us, work with us collaboratively because we're doing a lot of work with our local stakeholders, not just businesses but local authorities and the universities to see where they can contribute, what we can do to work together because at the end of the day, this is a community issue that's just going to get more difficult in the future with changing weather patterns. We have flood events every year, and if you do nothing about them, if you don't prepare yourself for them, then you're just sitting waiting for a problem to happen.